Yeah, let's talk about the state of Kathy. What's poppin' everyone, it's your boy Levi, and Kathy is currently dominating lobbies after the addition of dual swords to her kit. It always becomes a problem when characters with simple kits get too strong. They're very abusable. I'm prefacing this video with I am not a good Kathy player at all whatsoever. I even hate playing this character, but she's incredibly strong on this patch so here's how you make the best of it. The build for this character is a 5 zone amp build starting in temple. Don't worry about calling in items or missing items in zones, there's plenty of places to do so on this route. For food, you're gonna go with mocha bread and purified water for SP. Let's jump into it. Let it be known, prior to this patch, I had only 13 Kathy games across 7 seasons of Eternal Return. 13. Once again, I am not good at this character, and you don't have to be either. Start off in temple and run to whatever distribution zone you want to loot. I personally like the top 2 near the temple hyperloop and the left side near the avenue entrance. You can grab coffee now that they're in temple if you want or you can wait till you get the sum. When you're ready, move on to school. In school, your timing can really be made or broke by your spawn. You'll definitely want one of the right side spawns. Anything else and you're going to be a little bit slower. You'll need a lighter for your build, but if you got an unlooted distribution, you can probably get a second one. Path towards alley for whatever spawn you get and grab an alcohol if you can. I unfortunately missed alcohol here, but you definitely want to grab it for your food. In alley, you don't need a ton of items, so don't worry if you're looting behind someone. The only item you really need is a hammer, and it's not a big deal if you don't get it. As long as you don't miss other items, you can call it in. There's also three chickens on the left side of here in alley, so you can grab your leather. If you didn't get the extra layer in school, no worries as well, you can try again here. Drink one of your waters and turn the other into boiling water. If you don't get a lighter, no worries, just make ice water in some. You can skip across here if you want and grab it in chapel later, or you can skip the chain and grab it in some. Now that we're in some, make your mocha bread if you have it. If not, I would kill the chickens and chapel for me and make burgers unless you rode oil off a of bat and then you can make fried chicken like me. Iced water and iced coffee can both be made for SP. If you did miss a chain in alley, you'll probably need two distributions in sim here to find it, but if not, move on to chapel. And chapel's our last zone really. You technically can miss a piano wire here and still be fine, but I'll explain that in a little bit. The build is pretty fast for a five zone build. If you're feeling it, you can go for tree. But I personally feel like a lot of the matchups here aren't very good for Kathy. Hayes, Adina, even Daniel don't feel really that great this early on in the game. If you do get a tree, make L and Z. I like to head over to Uptown and grab the bears there at night one. If you miss Piano Wire in Chapel, you can also grab one here in Uptown. If the meteorite is also spawning in Uptown, grab that instead of the bears. Also, don't forget to pick a fight with a Tia and miss all your abilities. Don't worry, you'll still get the kill. Use the meteorite for Kabani. Clear out some of the hunts left in Uptown if there is any, and I like to go to Alpha next. Alpha also happened to be in Uptown here, which is like best case scenario. Establish your vision control and be prepared to fight anyone for it. That includes a yawn for me. Like always, don't forget to miss your ult. One of the best parts about Kathy being dual swords is that it gives her an extra dash. It really helps when you whiff everything. There's a lack of amp dual swords characters. Dual swords allows you to attack twice with basic attacks for a loss of damage, which is why basic attack and crit build synergize well with it. Back in the day, you used to do some crazy healing with amp dual swords rampage, but now it's been toned down. Gone are the days of amp Jackie healing the full with W and DS rampage, thankfully. I think one of the big things about Kathy being too strong at this moment is that you don't have to use your spells to their full potential currently. Kathy's Q when procking her passive lowers some of the cooldown on it. Her E is also a two part stun where you need to hit an opponent and another object. She hardly feels like she needs either of those to get kills. With the Mithril, I like to go Emerald Tablet. If you already have an accessory for whatever reason, you can make Mithril Dress. Night 2 and you can head back to the chapel and clear out any of the hunts that are there. I ran into my favorite hunt, Tazia, and picked up my kill. You can also call in a tree with console to make LNZ. I had enough credits here to call in a force core, but normally you won't have 4 kills on day 2, so that I called in a tree instead. Or maybe you will. This character is kind of busted. Our next point of interest is Omega. I haven't exactly figured out how to take objectives with Kathy yet. I think you have to take it in two stages, waiting for your cooldowns to come up between. With Force Core, you want to make Talarian Timepiece. It's some nice amp and attack speed. 
You also get access to Vigor. You know, the good stuff. Once you got your transitions, it's time to do Wick. And you guessed it, do it poorly. Please don't do what I did and almost die to her. Luckily, no one was around me to kill me. This is why you always show up at Wick, even if you don't have the intention of taking it. Because if something like this happens, it's literally a free kill for you. As always, we want the sum of best parts with our blood item. Typically, you would go Tap Roots for the cooldown reduction, or Necronomicon for the healing reduction and Amp. But I already had Glacials and Emerald Tablets, so I went Opera Mask. I actually didn't realize that Opera Mask has 65 Amp on it. Feels like a lot. Now all that's left is to murder the entire lobby, Smile. And at this point, hitting abilities are just the side bonus for Cappy. As long as you get your passive and your ult, you basically guarantee yourself a kill. Here's a fight with Yuki where I missed W and E, and proceed to do half of Yuki's health with basic attacks and heck. I ult to gap close, and the Yuki over predicts my Q and I kill him for it. Late game Isol also proves to be a pretty difficult matchup when he has traps down. Well, difficult if you don't really know the character that well. I really wasn't expecting to just raw ult him for most of his health, but W into ult plus hex plus bleed was enough to kill him. I hit two spells and killed him from full. And I used one of my main spells to gap close. The character's really balanced. Final fight here, here we go. It's another Yawn, who pretty sure, if you couldn't tell at this point, didn't stand much of a chance. No hype final fight, unfortunately. I just W him down Bleeder Jackie style. I imagine we're going to see a minor Cappy nerf next patch. I'm sure it will come with compensation buffs, unfortunately, but I do think she needs to be toned down a bit. Anyways, yeah, Overpowered Character Series is back, so be on the lookout for more of these. I also have a really fun video that I'm currently working on, so look out for that in the upcoming week. If you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan, you'll probably like it. Thanks so much for watching if you made it to this point. Normally I would say insert character here is a ton of fun, but I really hate playing Cappy. Subscribe if you're enjoying Eternal Return, and be sure to click the video in the end card to see how my day one experience with Tazio went.